Now that we've seen how all the various pairs of gas variables are related to one another, we can combine all of these observations into a single equation that relates all four variables. And this is known as the ideal gas law. And unless you spent a lot of time sleeping in high school chemistry class, you've probably seen this equation before. Gases that obey the ideal gas law are characterized by a particular sub-microscopic model that we'll dig into a little bit later. And they're said to be ideal gases. And the equation is the pressure times the volume is equal to the number of moles times a constant R times the temperature in Kelvin. PV equals nRT, or pervnert, as it's sometimes called. Now, we can develop a multi-point or multi-state form of the ideal gas law at constant number of moles by dividing both sides of this equation by temperature and realizing that P times V divided by T must be equal to a constant, N times R. And so P1 V1 divided by T1 is equal to P2 V2 divided by T2. This is known as the combined gas law. Now, let's talk a little bit about this constant R. It's known as the ideal gas constant or the ideal gas law constant, and it is profoundly important because it shows up everywhere where the ideal gas model is used, implicitly or explicitly. And the ideal gas model is very, very commonly used. Gases are an extremely convenient and simple phase of matter, as we will come to understand when we look at the kinetic molecular theory. And so R shows up a lot of different places, and its units are rather interesting, as we'll see here in a second. So two forms of R that you'll use most commonly are the kind of energy-based form with joules, 8.314 joules per kelvin per mole, and another form that you'll commonly use, which is convenient when you're dealing with calculations with gases, is a form that uses liter atmospheres as the energy unit, 0.08206 liter atmospheres per kelvin per mole. Now, if you look at the units of R and you compare the left and right-hand sides of the ideal gas law, and you remember our definition for expansion work way back in the thermochemistry unit, you'll appreciate that the left-hand side of this equation is an energy value, and the right-hand side, of course, must also correspond to an energy value. So the ideal gas constant is an energy per temperature per mole. That is important to appreciate conceptually because we've seen those units in the context of entropy. Energy per temperature is the units of entropy and R can be thought of as a kind of molar entropy, as an entropy per mole. There's a deep idea there that I won't get into but relates to chemical thermodynamics and how we think about entropy. Let's work a practice problem involving the ideal gas law. Methane is being considered as a replacement fuel for gasoline. One gallon of gasoline in terms of energetic equivalent could be replaced by 655 grams of methane, CH4. What we want to know is what is the volume of this methane, methane is a gas, at 25 degrees C and 745 torr, or millimeters of mercury, torr is equivalent to millimeters of mercury. And then what is the pressure of this gas when we try to put it in a typical 15 gallon gas tank. We'll see if that's practical or not to compress the methane to that volume. So to begin, let's think about the ideal gas law. And let's note, because we're gonna need it later, that the molar mass of methane is 16-ish grams per mole. Volume can be calculated using the ideal gas law as the number of moles times R times the temperature divided by the pressure. We just need values for each of these variables on the right-hand side. Let's start with the temperature, 25 degrees C plus 273.15, because we need to get this in Kelvin, gives us 298.15 Kelvin as the temperature. What about the pressure? Well, I've got 745 millimeters of mercury or torr. That's not a very convenient unit to use in the ideal gas law because we would need R with millimeters of mercury units. We could go out and look that up or find it or calculate it out ourselves, but to me, it's easier to just convert this pressure in millimeters of mercury into something in atmospheres. I like atmospheres because they're very intuitive, very human friendly. So 745 times this conversion factor, which just comes from knowing that the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, we get 0.980 atmospheres. What about the number of moles? Well, that's why we need the molar mass. We've got a mass and we need to go to moles basic stoichiometry. It's 40.8 moles of methane that we're dealing with here. 
And now we have N, T, and P. We can plug in and chug to determine the volume using the version of R, if you like, or the units of R that allow unit cancellations with the quantities we've got. I've got moles, atmospheres, and uh, temperature in Kelvin, so liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole makes the most sense to use in terms of the units of R. We multiply all this out, we end up at 1.02 times 10 to the third liters, about one kiloliter is one way to think about this. Now, how do we get the pressure from this? Well, now let's imagine shrinking that 1,000 liters down to 15 gallons. We can plug in 15 gallons, or the liter equivalent, to make the units friendly into here to get that pressure, and this comes out to 17.6 atmospheres. So I haven't actually listed 15 gallons in liters, but try that calculation on your own. Plug it in using this 40.8 moles and the 298 temperature, and you'll see that that's 17 atmospheres, 17.6 atmospheres of pressure. So pretty high pressure to compress that methane into a typical gas tank. One of the amazing things about the ideal gas model is that it has no information or needs no information about the identity of the gas. This is remarkable because unless we're doing something stoichiometric like we did in this practice problem, we actually don't need to know the molecular identity of the gas, the chemical formula, to know about its pressure, temperature, volume, and number of moles. And the idea of standard temperature and pressure allows us to begin exploring this concept. So standard temperature and pressure is a typical pressure and temperature for a gas under pretty normal conditions, zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere or one bar, depending on your source. At this defined temperature and pressure, the volume of a mole of gas is a constant, regardless of the chemical formula of the gas. And this becomes easiest to understand if we rearrange the ideal gas law to V divided by N is equal to RT divided by P. If the temperature and pressure are constant and fixed as they are at standard temperature and pressure, or STP, the left-hand side must be a constant. And the left-hand side is a molar volume, a volume per number of moles. So the molar volume of a gas at STP is a constant and it's 22.4 liters per mole of gas. And this is a number that you may be familiar with. And the wild thing about this is that this is true regardless of the chemical formula, as I mentioned. So the gas particles may have different masses, but they're gonna have the same number of moles, pressure, temperature, and volume at STP, assuming they all behave ideally. 